Hi, my name is Mitch Steven, and today's episode is about what are coping skills for addiction. And the reason why I bring in this episode to light is because there are so many of these personalities in this industry, the creative real estate investing industry. And not only are they addictive personalities, but when they latch onto something, they latch on 100%. And I see a lot of alcohol abuse, a lot of drug abuse, and I just see a lot of people getting trapped in their vices because we're surrounded by all this high energy and this certain kind of personality type. I interviewed a man named Dennis Barry, who's really well versed in beating addictions. I have a very personal reason for bringing this topic to light. You see, I stopped drinking and smoking after 40 years of daily drinking and smoking. It wasn't easy, it had its challenges, and it affected my life drastically when I made the change. It was so drastic and so much more improved that I lost 60 pounds. I went from a 36 inch waist to a 28 inch waist. My hair started growing back and just a lot of things happened. And I see so much of this abuse and so many people trapped in this that may not even know they're trapped in it. So I wanted to talk to Dennis Berry about addiction and what there is to do about it. And if you're contemplating maybe dropping something that you don't want to do anymore, but it's proving to be a little more serious than you think, then this interview may just be for you. <laughs> Dennis, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Mitch. How are you, man? Thanks so much for having me. I'm uh, super excited. Well, so you're in Colorado. You struggled with uh, alcohol addiction or other addictions? Right. So, yeah, I've been sober since April 8th of 2003. And so my 32nd story is uh, I'm an old ski racer guy. So I used to live in the mountains and ski. And then I became a chef to pay the bills so I can ski all the time and party and do all that stuff. And it just kind of got out of control. And then in 2003, I was like 70 pounds overweight, unhappy, unhealthy, didn't know how to go about changing all that. So I had, I couldn't drink anymore, but I couldn't stop drinking. And I was doing a lot of cocaine, smoking two packs a day. Um, I was really unhealthy. You couldn't drink anymore, but you couldn't stop drinking. What is, I couldn't drink anymore. Do you mean Physically, you couldn't drink anymore, or it was just the fun had wore off of it, and you didn't want to drink anymore, but you didn't know what else. That's just always what you've done. <laughs> That's a great question. Well, the truth is, like, I couldn't drink anymore, like, because I was killing myself, and I would drink and just to pass out for a few hours, and then I would wake up and throw up. And... So physically, you were consuming as much as you could possibly consume. You couldn't put another teaspoon down your throat. So you, when you say I couldn't drink anymore, it means you were you were saturated. Yeah, I reached the end. And, and unfortunately, that's what it takes for a lot of people, you know, what we call rock bottom, just reaching that point in your life where you just can't take anymore. And that's when you become willing to make the changes that are necessary, stop that behavior. When people talk about getting sober or clean, free from addiction, recovered, whatever you want to call it, it's not about not drinking or snorting cocaine or smoking weed or whatever. It's about facing your problems, you know, facing life as it comes at you because it comes at you every day. Life doesn't stop coming at you. It's not, oh, I'm going to stop drinking and I'm going to make a million dollars and have the perfect relationships and my health are great. Like you have to work on those things and you need to first stop doing those harmful behaviors so you can get to those points. So just for the record, it still offends me when I'm referred to as an alcoholic or an ex-alcoholic or that because I never, ever considered myself that. Although I drank almost every day, I guess technically by the definition I am, but and for right or wrong, I know that I was, you know, I mean, I probably met every symptom I, or, or every thing that's in the definition of an alcoholic I was, except for my life hadn't fallen apart, my finances hadn't fallen apart, my relationship hadn't fallen apart, my relationship with my kids was still good. I was just a highly functional, highly functional. So what I want to point out to people is, is nothing fell apart in my life. I didn't have a DWI, I didn't get in a wreck, I didn't kill anybody, I didn't maim myself. There was no fight, there was no argument, there was no falling down. I just realized I could not go any further under the demands of this demon. This demon was taking so much of my time, occupying so much of my mind, making me useless many hours of the day. And when I say useless, I wasn't, again, I wasn't falling down, 
but I wasn't going to go finish that last half of my book in that last three hours of the day because I just wasn't in any mental state to do it because I had too much alcohol in me, you know, and I didn't feel like doing it. I wanted to sit and vegetate or smoke the rest of those cigarettes, which was my big deal. I would get two or three bourbons in and you couldn't stop me from smoking a whole pack of cigarettes. I realized those two combinations with the acid reflux was going to kill me. It was going to kill me. If you're enjoying these kind of interviews and you think these episodes on YouTube are helpful, please let's draw your attention to the like button and the share button and of course the subscribe button. Now, back to my interview with Dennis Berry. You know, what I told you was my story. My story of like despair, pitiful despair, getting to the end where I was unhealthy, I was killing myself. That, but I also have been, in the beginning I did a lot of 12 step recovery stuff and you know, I was at a meeting once where this woman said she was the speaker. It was a speaker meeting and she was the speaker, the star of the show. And her story was she drank two little shooters of vodka every day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's not even enough to make a drink. Like that didn't make sense to me because I drank two shooters of vodka as soon as I opened my eyes every morning. So that didn't make sense to me. But to her, it was a problem. To you, it was a problem even though you hadn't hit that bottom. So to everybody, it's different. You can't really define what that line is for people. The important thing is to realize that, you know, I want to get here and my behavior, what I'm doing now, whether it's drinking a, a handle of vodka every day or drinking two shooters of vodka every day, is keeping me from getting here. And so if that's a problem for you and you, and you decide to stop but you really can't, if you say, I'm not going to drink this week, and you can't make it two days, maybe it's a problem. But I can't define that for you. You have to make that decision for yourself. It could be porn. It could be video games. It could be a lot of things. You say, if I stop doing this, I could accomplish so much more in this other area that would be so much more rewarding. Why am I stuck doing this thing? So it doesn't even have to be an illegal drug or, a, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be anything that... I know, do know what you mean. Yeah, and that's, that's a great point because, you know, what it really comes down to is, is your behavior, right? It comes down to the, um, your state of mind. And it's like, all right, so we all have problems and it's called the human condition. It's not confined to Mitch or Dennis or anybody else. We all have maybe some fears, some uh, things in our life that are keeping us from getting where we want to be. And so what are we doing? Are we trying to get through those things or are we eating some chocolate cake to get through those? Are we drinking some something? Are we watching porn? Are we smoking cigarettes instead of handling the situation that's in front of us? And that's when it becomes a problem. And so I have solutions to those problems to help get people through those. You know, we've said it a thousand times, but in a different venue. You know, if you want to get someplace that you've never been before, you need to saddle up with someone who's already been there and knows the trail. You could be a coach for someone clear across an ocean, you know, in this kind of setting. You can coach this thing with Zoom pretty easy, I would think. No, you're, you're absolutely right. I have a client in Australia, and I have a client in India, and then all throughout the United States. So, yeah, I mean, like, alcoholism, addiction of any kind, it's not confined to any certain place or location. It's all over the planet. And people are numbing out instead of facing their problems all over the planet. I have a client in Canada and he's struggling with smoking right now. And so we're working on getting him through that. And he's been through cancer and surgery and he's advanced in years, and, uh, but he still smokes. So we have to get to the root cause of why he's smoking, not just, oh, there's this physical craving there, but why is he doing that behavior instead of facing life? And that's what it comes down to. And not everybody's willing to do the work. In my book, I talk about this how approach. And people often ask, how do I become successful? How do I become free of my addictions? How do I become sober? How do I become healthy? And how stands for honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. I need to be honest and first say, you know what? I have a problem. Something's not right. And then I need to be open to listening to a different point of view that maybe the way I'm living isn't working. And then W stands for, I need to be willing to make those changes. So that's why, are you in a position in your life where you're willing to do things differently to get different results? And it's important to take on whatever you do in life. You know, I'm talking about addiction recovery, but whatever you do in life, bring that how approach in. Be honest, open, and willing in everything you do in life, and you're going to be more successful. 
That concludes our episode with Dennis Berry. I hope you liked it. Please go to this link, 1000houses.com forward slash free dash stuff and click on the link that reads recorded Q&A call. There you'll find a recorded call where I meet with people all over the nation, over the phone, every Tuesday night, every week, and we have a Q&A session. There are people from all over the nation asking all kinds of questions. And if you're in this industry, you're going to run into these problems sooner or later. So wouldn't it be nice to see them coming way before they get to you? This call is about an hour and a half long. It's recorded. You can digitally download this recording and you can listen to this call, hear the tone and see the value. And hopefully you will join us on that Tuesday night call one day and we'll help you get to where you're going as well. All right, this is Mitch Steven, and we're headed over to the next episode.